after this video, we'll be right back. How to build a $100 million startup in three years. Now, I know that's a huge promise. Wait with me, I'm gonna walk you through exactly why I'm talking about this video and how to do it. I mean, maybe you just wanna build any kind of business and you feel like um, all the growth options are confusing and how would you do this and how would you fund it? And how would, to me, it's like even how do you do it in a way that doesn't turn you into a stress ball? I'm going to unpack that big question and tell you where it came from and, and build a sequence for you to just understand you can do it these are the items that need to be true. And I think it's really important as a founder to understand the different aspects of a business model to really dissect what would it take to build that level of velocity and volume in your business. Now, I've been fortunate enough to spend a lot of time. I lived in San Francisco for five years. I've been around entrepreneurs that have built companies that fast. And uh, I understand the economics and the valuations and the structure that's required to get there. Now, for me, it came from one of my coaching clients. I had a guy that recently sold his company and wanted to get on a call with me because that was the question. He emailed me, how, how I wanna build a, a $100 million company in three years, how would I do that? And I was like, I didn't dismiss it because the guy just sold his business, so I knew he was capable of you know, building companies, but I was like, what an interesting thought experiment. So I kind of took some a few minutes, wrote down some notes, scheduled a time, and we got on a call, and this is what I shared with him. And at the end of it, I think he got real clear on, oh, okay, now I get, now I know what areas I need to focus on. Now I know what needs to be true to make this happen. And I thought it'd be really valuable to share it here. So the first thing is you need to solve a huge, major problem, okay? So for you to build that kind of company, it needs to be a problem that a lot of people have and it has to be a major problem that they all have. And you need to solve it in a unique and potent way. And the reason why I say unique and potent is because if other people are already solving it, then you have a competitor uh, problem. So it has to be unique to you and it has to be potent, meaning that as fast as possible, they have a problem and your solution gets them the result. That's what I mean by potent. The time from I've got a problem and your solution has to be as short as possible. So that's number one, just has to be huge. You have to solve it in a unique, potent way. Some people call that product market fit, but it's more than just product market fit. It's literally like the fastest to product market fit in a non-competitive space. So that's a big challenge number one, not impossible, but needs to be solved. Two is you need to build a growth engine. So when I talk about growth engines, my, my whole strategy is around marketing or demand or attract and sales or conversion um, and getting people essentially to buy. And what you need to do, and this is the key, to build that level of growth, 100 million in three years, you need to build a repeatable, scalable marketing engine so that you need to be able to invest in a channel that's untapped and unlimited, or to some degree, predominantly unlimited, and that the payback period, and this is why it's an engine, that the amount of money you spend and the time you recuperate that investment, so if you spend $10 to acquire a customer, you need to get that as fast as possible. Most people on the small business side, just so you know, in the software space, they'll spend about $180 to $200 to get uh, a free trial into their product. So you need to be able to recoup that quickly, ideally 30 days. Some companies take them 16 months, on average, it's about 10 to 12 months. So you wouldn't be able to do 100 million in three years if the payback period took, I would say, literally longer than 60 days. You wanna make that as fast as possible. That's the second thing that needs to be true is just a growth engine from a marketing and sales and velocity of payback period to your investment. The third thing is you're gonna need to build the best team, okay? And the reason why is you are not that good. Like, I get that you could be the most incredible founder in the world, but you are not gonna be able to hold the amount of balls in the air and juggle them at the quality level that's required to be able to scale up the customer accounts, to support those customer accounts, to build out the product, to build out the engineering team, all those different aspects, the financial structure, the dashboards, et cetera. Again, I'm game, you can do it, three years, 100 million, but you're gonna to have to build the world's best team in each specific function of your business, okay? So that that is, you know, how do you recruit? How do you compensate? How do you bring them together? That That's gonna be a big challenge that you need to develop that skill around um, finding, recruiting, convincing, leading, supporting, uh, delegating, all these things that come around the people side, that's gonna be required. So that's the third big thing. The fourth is you're gonna need to raise money, and here's why. 
A lot of people, they feel like, well, if I can get customers to pre-buy the software, um, then I've got a positive cash flow situation. And that might be true on the initial cost, your cost to acquire a customer, maybe your marketing cost, and then if you can get them to pre-buy enough, then it has a, a positive cash flow. But that doesn't hold true when you gotta start investing in the team. You know, one of the biggest line items typically for a software company is their people. So it's not marketing typically, it's gonna be the people. So if you wanna, you know, if you've got an ability to get a short payback period on your, on your growth engine on the marketing side and your sales, that doesn't support your ability to hire top talent at scale to be able to get the people to run those different divisions. So raising money to invest in marketing, to invest in your team is gonna be critical, especially if you use a partnership strategy to acquire customers, because that's a really viable strategy. They're gonna to wanna to get paid in a short amount of time to get, for getting those new customers to allow you to keep that ramp. The other thing I told them is like, map out three years, $100 million revenue business and work backwards. Like the amount of revenue growth you would need to do on a month by month basis is, is, is alarming, is crazy. Not impossible, but you map that revenue growth to the investment that's gonna be required and that's the amount of capital that you're gonna need to raise. So a lot of people think like, oh, I could just bootstrap this. There's no freaking way. You know, I've, I've grown a business 150% year over year compounded and I know the sound that makes. It's this big swishing, sucking sound of cash. When you grow a business at scale, whoosh, it takes capital. So making sure that's part of the strategy is gonna be critical because without it, you're not gonna be able to keep the growth. Even if you've got everything else working for you, you won't be able to sustain it. Finally, the fifth thing is you gotta build the business in a way that can be sold. So a lot of founders, they, they find growth channels, they find team members, but they don't build it in a way that's sustainable. You know, they, they might find a, a loophole inside of some Facebook API or some LinkedIn thing or some you know, scraping email outbound system or whatever it is. I've seen every variation possible, but they're not sustainable. So you need to build the business where the comp structure for your executive team, where the marketing channels that you're using are not gray area, where the product allows it to, to sell itself. Those things are required and if you don't do it, right, then you're just gonna build, you can actually hit the 100 million in three years, but then the whole thing's gonna come falling to the ground. So that filter of saying, can I build it in a way that's gonna be sold, is gonna allow you to actually build the right business. Now here's a tip. Okay, because to me it's like, okay, you wanna do this, I love the ambition, let's go do it, here's the pattern, here's the big challenge you're gonna have to overcome. The tip is, and the question I asked to this individual was, you know, would you dedicate your life, the rest of your life, 25 years, 30 years of your life, if you knew that you only had a 50% chance of being successful in that business? And I love that question because it gets really clear for what's required, I know you think, you're gonna build this thing in three years, it's gonna be a huge business, but what if it's not? And what if those three years ask everything of you, your health, your relationships, your family, your mental capacity, what if that just sucks everything out of you and still you don't even come close to hitting that? Is it worth it to you? Are you willing to dedicate your life with a 50% chance? And that question will help everybody get clear of why do you want to build a hundred million a year business in three years? Is it the right strategy for you and where you're at in your business? Is it doable based on your skill sets, your background, your experience with the things I just mentioned? But I think it's an incredible question. So first thing, you need to solve a big major problem in a unique way. Second thing is you've got to build a growth engine that attracts people and allows the payback period to be short. You want to put together a world-class A player team to run and manage and lead every different function in your business. The fourth thing is you're gonna to have to raise money to fund that growth. And then fifth, build it in a way that the business could be sold so that you're not building a house of cards. That is my uh, feedback for you, those that are ambitious enough to go on that plan. As per usual, I wanna challenge you to live a bigger life and a bigger business, and I'll see you next Monday. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel for other growth strategies for your startup. I'd also invite you to join my newsletter for private invites, exclusive contests, and other free training. And if you're ready to keep going, I got two videos queued up for you. I'll see you next Monday.